Hello, my name is Glenn Dyer, and you're watching a Dyer Situation. Today, I'm seeing all eyes on me. It's a movie about Tupac. I, that'll be fun. Um, well, clearly, this has been made uh, due to the popularity of uh, um, Straight Outta Compton, which, of course, was fucking awesome. Um, it's not made by any of the same people, though, so I can't guarantee it's that level of quality, but, uh... Yeah, I've never seen any trailers for it. Um, I, I'm i not the biggest fan of Tupac's music. Well, I shouldn't say that. I don't know much about Tupac's music. Um, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's where I'm coming in for this. I have no idea what the movie's going to be like. Uh, so, let, let's see it then. And I'm back! Um, you know, I didn't think that was possible, but I think I actually know less about Tupac now than I did before I watched the movie. The first two thirds of this movie, and a little bit in the last third, is just, hate to say it, awful. Like, really awful. It feels, especially during the first two thirds, like, like a fan film, like, not made by somebody who wanted to tell a story, or somebody who had a very important message they wanted to get across, more somebody who was just like, man, Tupac's so cool, I'm just gonna make a movie about his life, because he is so cool, that's all we'll need. We'll just make a movie about him. Doesn't even matter what's in it or how it's structured, you know. It's just... It's about Tupac. This is... This is exploited to the point where he is literally portrayed as Jesus. I'm not even kidding you. Throughout the movie, I was just making, like, Jesus remarks about him in my head. The movie opens, like with um, a pan around to his back in front of a crowd screaming his name and he's like bathed in a heavenly light and I'm like oh great <laughs> um, especially during the two, first two thirds every single action he does is the right action he is a perfect human being because he is above humanity in every single way he also has no character during that time, because literally he has, he seemingly has no agency. In fact, he, if I'm to judge the, judge it entirely by this movie, Tupac must have been an extremely boring person in his own right, because literally every single decision he makes seems to have just been a direct influence by other, sometimes completely random people. Like at one point he's in prison. And this, and this dude, we've never seen before and never see again, just approaches him from out of nowhere and is like, Yo, Tupac, I know everything about your life. Let me tell you the exact thing you should do next. <laughs> oh, God. So bad. And if you think I'm just being mean saying, oh, they're comparing him to Christ, they play gospel music when he dies. <laughs> I'm not even joking. There, they literally are comparing him to Jesus. <laughs> As you know, uh, um, Jesus was said to die for our sins um, by like letting himself be captured by the Romans and stuff. But yeah, well, um, Tupac got shot in a drive-by in his car um, after a string of really bad decisions. Same thing. <laughs> Jesus. <sighs> it's practically unwatchable, unless you're like a die-hard Tupac fan and you're like, yeah, T Tupac's so cool, or you know a lot about him or already going into the movie, you won't enjoy this, like, at all. Um, I mean, m most of the time, it seemed to be banking on the fact that you know most about his, his life, most of his albums, most of his... Uh, his personal experiences, because they name drop things like, yo, this new record I'm making will be a great hit, and stuff, but 
Like, we never see results of that. We never see um, people's reactions to it. Not really. It's just kind of like, yo, this album, and we're supposed to recognize it and cheer, I suppose. And nothing comes of it. Like, you know, when I watched Straight Outta Compton, for example, I had no idea anything about N.W.A. at all. Knew nothing about them. But they endeared us to their story. They told us enough of what we need to know. I'm sure if I knew an in-depth, like, um, <laughs> a biography of them, it would have helped. But, like, you don't need it to, to understand the movie. And another thing, just because somebody dies, and just because, you know, somebody died pretty young, doesn't make them Jesus. I mean, Easy e also died young. But in that movie, he was portrayed as a human fucking being, with, like, personal faults and agency of his own, and he made bad decisions, he made some good decisions, and you feel for him, you emphasize with him. With Tupac... He's like a fucking blank slate most of the time. During the last third, he gains some agency, but he's but only to the point of him becoming kind of a dick. And I I don't see the appeal of him. Like honestly, it try to imagine if this was an entirely fictional film. If this were just um like rapper man the movie or something like that. And you know none none of this actually happened. And it's not based on a real person. What's there to endear you to this guy? Not much. Just hearsay and people like, Oh, he's such a great guy, he's such a great actor. Or, he's such a great singer and stuff. And the music is good, sure. It's good covers, but... Like... <laughs> you never see the results of it. At one point he's bragging it, like, um... Yo, these, these people are asking me to, um... Uh, the, the, this person has to see me before they died, and uh, or, or something like that. Or this person saying they were inspired by me, or something like that. We don't see that. We never see stuff like that. We, uh, uh, like, at one point, this little girl asked him for his autograph. That's the closest we get to him making, like, a positive influence, like the movie keeps claiming he did. Like, Jesus Christ. As sorry as I am to say it, because it has good points, as I said, the music is good, and it does have sort of a character arc going on in there. The movie's a piece of shit, I'm sorry. There's no other way to put it. The only thing out of this that might have been kind of cool is nothing to do with the movie itself. It's just like he, um, just like in Straight Outta Compton, they run into that Death Row Records guy and stuff, the you know, the jackass, and, you know, they meet Snoop Dogg and all that, like, all, like, Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg are in this movie, and this makes me think, like, you know, this, this whole thing is kind of interweaved, what if there was, like, a, like, a, his, oh, um, a gangster rap expanded universe, or, like, <laughs> you know, just, like, a 90s, um, rap expanded universe, or, you know, we have, like, a, a Biggie Small movie where it expands upon his lore and his lifestyle, and it connects to these ones, and the characters come back and influence each other. But it would be really interesting, because it's all real life, you know? It'd be, it'd be cool. It would also be extremely stupid, but, you know, <laughs> a guy can dream. But, yeah, that's it. That's it. And, as I said before, unless you are, like, a super die-hard fan, like, you know all his albums, you really love the guy, you have no, no reason to watch this. It's not gonna be that appealing to you. It is just... <sighs> yeah, like a fan fiction. Sorry, sad to say. It had potential. That's all. That yeah. And until next time, I'm Glenn Dyer, and you have been watching A Dire Situation.